Now, the Subway Final Word. Welcome back. I'm Albie Oxenrider. Jerome Bettis has been eligible for the Hall of Fame and has fallen short for three consecutive years. This year, he's the only running back on the final list of candidates, but will that do the trick for Jerome? Is this the year that Bettis makes the Hall of Fame? Josh, you go first this time. Well, I think he has a chance, but I don't think he gets in. He, From everything we've heard, he hasn't been real close to getting in the past couple of years, even when he's had a chance. I know last season some people thought he would get in, and he did not. Listen, here's part of the problem. I think he will get in someday. He played for so long and had slowed down so much by the end of his career. I really think people forget how great he was in his prime. If you go back to his first two or three seasons in Pittsburgh, that was Hall of Fame caliber stuff. He was unbelievable, putting up 1,500 yards a year. He wasn't that same player years later, and maybe people have forgotten that a little bit. But if John Riggins is in the Hall of Fame, if Curtis Martin's in the Hall of Fame, I think Bettis eventually gets in. Mark? We live in fantasy league culture, gentlemen. It is Stats America. And Jerome Bettis would only be the second running back in the Hall of Fame with a yards per carry average under 4.0. 3.9, just like the aforementioned John Riggins. There is one word to describe jo Jerome Bettis when it comes to his chances to being in the Hall of Fame, and that word is borderline. He might make it. He probably won't. Definitely not this year, but the word to describe him, and it's quite accurate, is borderline. Dan. Out of the top 17 running backs of all time in terms of rushing yardage, only two of them aren't in. One of them is Edger and James, who should never get in, and the other one is Jerome Bettis, who will get in. He's number six on the overall list. I don't care about the yards per average. This is, this is a guy who was you don't? short. You know, because he was a short yardage back. To me, it's even that much right, more Right, because those other backs never scored from the one or went for the sticks no, on fourth and it's short. Not that. It's they not, never did that. He wasn't the guy that was going to break open 40, 45-yard runs. That's the point. He was put into positions where he was getting... He he was running between the tackles, and yeah, other guys went between the tackles, but Jerome wasn't that back. He was w exactly what he was, the best big back, one of the best big backs in NFL history. He's absolutely going to get in. I actually don't think it'll be this season, though. I have drawn up uh, guys that I think will get in. I believe it's going to be a toss-up between him and Marvin Harrison. And the, the NFL likes to bring guys into the Hall of Fame by position. And there's a longer line at wide receiver, so I think Marvin Harrison might get in ahead of him. Question for anybody that wants to jump in. Quick answer. What about the argument that he revolutionized the position, the big back position? Well, who followed him? I wouldn't... Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Well, no, who was before him? John Henry Johnson, a bunch of guys. He did not revolutionize. No. Well, what about the fact I just wish Indy would have taken that fumble all the way back then he could oh, get no. in on the Bill Buckner sympathy votes. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, your tweets and your Facebook posts. Albie, I continue. can't help myself. The Nature Boy's in town. Woo! What's causing all this? Your comments will scroll down the left side of your screen throughout the show. And a sampling of the social media comments on Jerome Bettis' chances for the Hall of Fame. No, each year he doesn't go, it's less likely he will. Short-term memory. That's from Jim C. 23 Thanks for the tweet. Coming up next, our panel debates the Steelers' new offensive line coach as the Subway final word continues.